All right, well, welcome everybody. My name is Chris Garibald. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer here at Treasure Coast Food Bank, and welcome to our monthly series, Food for Thought. Um, this month, we are focusing on Older Americans Month. We have some great speakers. I am just here to sort of tee them up and let them spread their wisdom and talk about all the wonderful things they're doing in the community. I'm just going to give you a little bit of background before we get into that. So you're going to be hearing from a number of speakers today. I'm going to just give you a brief introduction. Um, we have a, a number of staff um, from our organization that are going to talk about some of the programming that we do for seniors. And we have some wonderful guests from uh, a couple of different organizations that we partner with, the Council on Aging and the Gifford Youth Achievement Center. that are going to also talk about some programs that we partner with them um, in the community to serve our seniors. Um, so May is Older Americans Month. It was established in 1963, and um, it is a way that we can bring more awareness about issues and things impacting uh, seniors and older Americans in our community. Um, this year's theme is Powered by Connection, um, and that's focusing on you know, the impact that meaningful connections have on our older neighbors. Um, so talking about our, uh, you know, being able to connect them with as many places and services and just um, people in the community to improve and impact their lives. Um, a little statistics in terms of um, seniors in the area, older neighbors, 2.7% um, or 2.1 million seniors are categorized as having very low food security in the United States. Unfortunately, Florida is in the top 10 states with the highest rates of senior food insecurity and very low food security for seniors. So, um, the rate is 8.5 for senior food insecurity, and it's 3.5 for very low food insecurity, and that is greater than the national rate. So our neighbors are facing a number of challenges when um, we talk about, um, you know, quality of life and things that can impact their quality of life. Um, medical costs, uh, financial income, fixed income restraints, a lot of them are on fixed income, so when we see things like prices, um, inflation impacting everyday household goods and things that they are used to purchasing, um, their buying power decreases when, um, you know, the pricing goes up and their income does not do that a lot for them. Um, and there have also been a number of factors besides um, certain inflationary things that are pretty common, food, but utilities are going up, housing is certainly becoming, and not becoming, it is, and it continues to be um, an issue in terms of affordability. And then um, utilities and transportation as well. So one in four older neighbors on the Treasure Coast are in need of food assistance. So we're here to kind of discuss how- How are we helping? And how can you maybe get involved in, in being a part of that help? So um, we do, in all of our, programs and particularly for programs with seniors, you know, we do have a person-centered approach and, um, you know, we have a number of different uh, programs that we have in the community, different partnerships, and that's because nobody really comes to having issues with food insecurity or hunger um, in one way so that there's no one solution to fix everybody's situation is different. Everybody's going through something different. So um, we take a look at different ways to do that. And some of it is by feeding, putting food out there um, and, and through emergency partners and through other programs. Um, nourishing food is a priority. So we're talking healthy, fresh food. Um, we're, and we're also talking about, you know, a lot of programs to empower people to help them improve their situation so that they don't need assistance. Um, and then engaging with the people in the community that are needy, in need of services, finding out from them, don't, but not assuming we know what they need, asking them what they need. Um, so those are the things that we do when we put together our programs and we look for partnerships in the community and uh, it's all to better serve our neighbors in need. Um, so these are some of the direct services and programs that we offer our older neighbors. Uh, nutrition education classes, which you're going to hear from one of our nutrition educators, Ryan, um, on how we do that, and particularly for seniors. Uh, we offer home delivery services uh, for people that have mobility issues, transportation issues, or health issues that prevent them from leaving the home, but they still need assistance. Uh, volunteer opportunities. 
to keep our older neighbors um, healthy and thriving and active and engaged. And so we have a number of things that they can come out and help with. Community partnerships like the Council on Aging and Get Review Achievement Center. We do mobile food distributions for those of our older neighbors who have a vehicle and can drive and, and you know, they're still out and about. Um, that's another way that they can access food. Um, to really get to the root causes of what, you know, their situation is and how to get them out of that. And you'll hear from one of our colleagues, Sherry, about that in a little bit more detail. And then one of the things that we have coming soon is our Medically Tailored Meals Program. And that's a new program that we're launching um, to help patients that have a chronic illness that need a nutrition intervention to help improve the quality of their life and, um, you know, help improve their health outcomes. So now I'm going to turn it over to Antonio and Corbin from our team, and they're going to talk to you a little bit about some of our senior programs. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Antonio Dimaski. This Friday is going to be my third month here at the agency, so pretty fresh. Um, CSFP, uh, we stands for the Commodity Supplemental Food Program. A little brief history about the program. Uh, it was designed by the by the U.S. Department of uh, Agriculture in the late '60s. It was designed specifically to serve uh, louder. Louder. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. It was designed specifically to uh, serve pregnant women, women with infants, and children up to six years old. Uh, usually low income areas. In the beginning of the '80s, they did a couple of pilot programs to serve uh, some of the senior. Uh, communities in Detroit and New Orleans. That those were very successful pilot programs and that's how they had adapted the senior uh, programs under the CSFP. Um, so far, we're serving one county, that's the Indian River County. And I hope and I believe in the future we can expand to serve more counties around uh, around us. Um, the number that we serve, it's 1,083 boxes. That's what the, the, the government has given to us so far. And we're looking forward to expense. So I'm going to let Corbin to take over and give you a little more of the application process and how the the whole business goes. All right. Hi, guys. My name's Corbin. I'm the program coordinator here at the Food Bank. Um, I've been Food Bank for a couple of years now, but very new to the senior program. I normally focus on child nutrition programs, um, but I've been very happy to segue over to the senior programs here we have. So our CSFP Senior Box Program runs once a month. It's the last Thursday of every month. Um, just like many things here at the Food Bank, we very much rely on tons of volunteers to help us with this program. Um, as of right now, it's only really me and Tony, and then just a ton of very dedicated, very lovely volunteers that help us. Um, we work out of several different churches, all through Indian River County, to help us do those distributions. Let me try this. We work at several different churches to help with our distributions. One of the things we've noticed just in the last three months of taking over the program is we really need to segue into getting more volunteers to help us deliver. Because what we've noticed a lot with seniors that weren't picking up their boxes for multiple months, it was normally due to a problem with not being able to get there, car not working, um, they can't manage to make it over there. So something to alleviate that, since we know that they're still in need and they still need those boxes every month, is to try to really increase our volunteer database to try to get them to deliver straight to their house. And it's something they really appreciate, to delivering straight to the door. And then volunteers really, really enjoy that face-to-face -face connection they get with the seniors, because you're going straight hand-to-hand. -hand. Here is your box every month, and they really do appreciate it. Um, so we love our program here, but we're always looking to expand. So when the government graces us and gives us more caseloads, we will just need to get more volunteers to help us deliver those boxes. But it's a great program that we see um, expanding definitely in the future. Uh, unfortunately, the economy it doesn't seem like it's getting better. So we have a feeling that this is going to be a need that's going to see increasing um, as the years to come. Sure. I mentioned, uh, I'll mention a couple more things. Um, obviously, we're growing as an agency. We have, uh, we're growing in the workforce. We're growing in the facility space. We're growing into um, donations and grants. In the future, we're going to have, uh, actually very soon, starting in June, we're going to have another grant starting for seniors, specifically in the rural areas where we can cover, um, we will, actually where we can deliver more boxes. So that's a new grant that is coming soon. Just you guys, if you posted, it would be another part of our job. So. 
All right, that leads us into our council on aging rep. You met Chris. Hi, my name is Yvette Krups. I work Credit Council on Aging of St. Lucie County, and um, we provide meals to seniors who are 60 years and older. We can provide free meals to seniors that come to our site to eat. We do get the federal and state funding for that as long as they're coming to our site. If they come to our site, we're able to provide transportation. So I would like for people to know about that service and what is what is available for seniors. Um, we have two locations. One, we serve all St. Lucie County. We have a congregate meal site in Fort St. Lucie, and we have one in a couple in Fort Pierce as well. We also deliver approximately 500 meals to homebound seniors. With the help of the Treasure Coast Food Bank, we're able to make that possible. We do receive funding and they do provide the meals to us. Also, um, if I get a phone call from somebody that was just released from the hospital, they can't get to um, the grocery market, they're immobile. We do have emergency meal boxes at our location where we can provide those boxes to seniors and del deliver that to their home. And I can't tell you how grateful we are for, for those boxes. Um, let's see, transportation, we have, we have approximately a hundred seniors that come to our congregated meal site at to eat. So please, if you know of any senior that needs help, please let us, let us know what a day looks like at the Council on Aging, because we are able to provide transportation about what, once they sign up, first they have to sign up with us. And, and then we're able to provide the transportation and the meals. So at 9.30, for those that are signed up, at 9.30 a.m., the buses start trickling in. About 60 seniors come to our Port St. UC location. They go into the congregated meal site. They socialize from 9.30 a.m. till about 10.30. 11 o'clock, a meal is served. It's a hot meal that's served to them. And then they eat. Sometimes this is the only meal that they have. I can tell you just from my account, there's a couple of seniors in there that that don't are homeless. They have a home or a bed to sleep in at 6 p.m., but after 7 a.m., they don't have a place to stay. So they come over to our location, they socialize, they eat, and then they just buy more time so that they could go to their bed to eat at 6 o'clock. So our location is a great place for them to come just to be nourished and get the needs that they, they need. And thank you again, Treasure Coast Food Bank, for providing those boxes to us. Um, about three o'clock, they, if they, they could leave at 12, a lot of them leave at noon, but it, they could stay in our center till three or four o'clock. Our doors close at four o'clock. Typically they leave by three, it's emptied out at three o'clock and then they go on to with their days. We also have activities throughout the month. Um, there's a calendar of activities. Um, I can, let's see, yeah. So um, yeah, I could give you another example. Uh, recently we had a senior who came into our center and he hadn't eaten for two weeks. And so we were able to provide him with the emergency food box of meals as well. We also provide support services for, for seniors. We have about 200 clients that um, receive in-home service which um, they do get a caretaker that comes to their house, help, helps them out with daily routines, helps routines around their house, whether it's bathing or um, cleaning up or preparing a meal. Um, a additionally, we have an adult daycare at our location. And again, Treasure Coast Food Bank, they provide the meals for our seniors who are in our adult daycare to eat those meals as well. And um, that wraps it up for me. And thank you so much for having me. Miss Teresa, we'd like to invite you to speak. I'll give her you the two minutes. Uh, good morning. Morning. Um, my name is Teresa Baxter, and um, I work at the Gift for Youth Achievement Center, um, and I'm the program coordinator for the Senior Citizens Program there, and um, we've been there this August will be 17 years, 
and being a partner with Church of the Coast Food Bank for when I was told, um, probably around 2009, 2010. So it started off small, but it has grown. But um, like I was telling, um, having a conversation, my seniors are my children. So I tell them all the time, it's like, it's an after school program, but underneath is more than an after school program. So it's a senior citizens program as well. So just talking about um, what we do, there's so much that we do um, for our seniors. Um, and that is basically, we have activities going on for them during the day, which is like um, exercise class. And that's on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then um, on Mondays, we have another exercise class, which is a Qigong class that they use. It's almost like Tai Chi. Um, classes and we keep that going for them so they be active and socialize uh, as well. We do have Bible study that uh, one of our local pastors, uh, Reverend Richardson, he does Bible study with our um, seniors. Um, then we have um, also partner with, I got a lot of partners that um, I connect with, which is the SRA. Um, Senior Resource Center, we partner with them to get a lot of stuff besides the food. And I appreciate Treasure Coast when they give us the miscellaneous things for seniors, which is like the depends, the pull-ups, and different things like that. We have um, SRA, um, the Senior, what is it, um, the VNA, the Red Cross, Silver Circle, um, for the love of cause, all those, they help with our seniors where for food for their pets because sometimes i tell them i said we don't want you to feed your dog what you're what you're eating but we want to make sure your dog is taken care of as well and they not too long ago um for the love of pause they end up doing vaccinations for them so it was really helpful for them to do that as well um living graciously is a website where we do supply um, medical equipment, medical supplies, um, if a donor lost their loved ones or um, they want to donate some of their excess supplies and stuff, they give them to me or to uh, the, the other agencies so we can call each other and figure out what is needed from wheelchairs to walkers to bedside commodes to shower chairs, you name it, anything medical we provide it. I'm to the point right now, I'm not surprised about anything that comes to me. And I'll be like, yes, I'm going to take it. And I'm like, who's going to ask for this? And I kid you not. I can go for stories on stories to tell you someone always calls right the next time and say, no, you don't have that. Yes, I do. And it's like, well, you want to come pick it up. So it's always a need from, um, uh, like I said, colossal bags to you, you name it. They just don't want to throw this stuff away. And we know our seniors is really in need of a lot of, a lot of help. Um, Cause I'm seeing a lot of things happening with our seniors where it's either food, medicine, or a roof over the head. And it's like my heart go out. I'm very passionate about what I do. I love what I do. Um, as, as I always tell anybody that when you think about children, you know they're needing to eat healthy, but if they don't have that person to look out for them, I even cook for them too. So just judge <laughs> I do cooking as well, but I always try to look for what is needed. Um, just like I said, there's other people like the love to serve, team success. All those people, it's just like we are a family that we come together and work together to help that. Um, Sunset, if you've ever been in the Gifford community, Sunset Apartments is where I originally started out and I never let go of them. But um, I thank First Presbyterian Church because I was like, I really want them to get food. And they stepped in their volunteers to come out but we still always need volunteers, but they stepped up to honor my wish of what I wanted to do to cover 
So every fourth Wednesday, which I do food pantry every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, um, we have them take food to them and deliver. So it's a great opportunity for them to get fresh vegetables for the most part. Shine Light Garden, if you're familiar with that in Vero, they give us vegetables as well. But we are seeing, I'm just seeing a lot of seniors by themselves and not have anybody. I do the drive through and I greet every heart. I greet every person that I you know can. And just to see their faces smile with my little horn, um, mm. you have to experience that part. It just means a whole lot to them to greet them. So um, I think I've covered everything on my little card. Sometimes you just go off, but I just appreciate Trench Coast Blue Bank for what they do and supporting me and um, doing to continue what we do for our seniors. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sherry Sikri. I am the Director of Client Services for the Treasure Coast Food Bank. This October, I will have been with Food Bank for 11 years. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about our Your Plate Health and Wellness Center, which is located here in Fort Pierce on the corner of Orange and 12th Street at 1203 Orange Avenue. Um, and just a quote from our book. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Just a quick from our CEO, Judy Cruz. Uh, your plate allows clients to achieve independence and empowers them to take back control of their lives. So the Your Plate facility was founded in um, March of 2012, um, and it helps not only um, combat hunger by providing food, but also through education, benefits assistance, and case management for the clients in need. So at our center, we do help clients with SNAP. Um, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a few moments. Florida Kid Care, which is our state-based health insurance programs for kids and teens. So that includes all of the state-based health insurance programs, not just Medicaid, which is the one most people know about. Um, temporary cash assistance for needy families, Medicare savings programs, hygiene pantry. We are able to provide hygiene products to our clients at our Your Plate facility. Um, we do live in a low income area and we do get a lot of homeless clients. So if we identify clients that are in need of those things, we're able to provide those to them at the center. Um, community outreach and education. We host uh, health and wellness classes at your plate as well and provide a lot of reach and referral services for our clients in need. We do partner with the National Council on Aging. Um, and their mission is to deliver resources, tools, best practices, and advocacy. Uh, advocacy. Um, our nation needs to ensure that every person can age with health, financial security, because aging well is a matter of equity, dignity, and justice. And so if you want more information about the National Council on Aging, you can go to ncoa.org. I did also include a couple of wonderful resources that they have. They have what's called benefitscheckup.org. There you can actually look um, and find all different resources that not just for food, but medical, health, financial services uh, for seniors. And it's a wonderful, um, it's like the nation's most comprehensive tool for seniors. And then they also have their AIDS Well Planner that they launched a few years ago, and we actually participated in the focus group to help them launch that um, here at the Food Bank. And that helps seniors plan um, beyond just their retirement and um, going forward um, for their end stages of life. So that, that's a wonderful tool for a lot of our clients as well. All right. Um, so, we do um, at the center um, provide clients with SNAP, which is Supplemental Nutrition Enrollment, or Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, formerly known as Food Stamps. Um, a lot of people still call it Food Stamps, but it, the name has changed and changed a very, very long time ago. Um, two out of every five seniors who qualify for SNAP benefits are not enrolled. So we like to go out and kind of um, talk with our seniors. Um, about different facts and myths and things like that um, for our seniors. So just a couple of myths that are out there. SNAP is only for families with children. 
SNAP is for anyone who qualifies, including seniors. Um, one of the biggest ones we get, um, I'll only get $15 a month, so it's not worth it. Actually, right now, the minimum is $23 a month. Now, that does seem very low. And we will work with our seniors to try to maximize their benefits wherever possible because there are certain things like their medical expenses that can be deducted from their income that they're not aware of. Um, so we do work with that. But even if they only get the minimum, which is at $23 a month, that $23 a month adds up over time. That's your basics every month, your eggs, your bread, your milk, you know. And if somebody sent you a $23 coupon in the mail every month, you would throw it away, you'd use it. So if they're going to give it to you, use it. <laughs> okay. Um, another myth that we get, I think this is the biggest one for seniors that we hear all the time. They feel like they're going to take it away from somebody else if they apply for SNAP. So that is actually a big myth. Um, SNAP is an entitlement program. So if you qualify, it's because you qualified for that service and you are not taking it away from somebody else. So that's, that's the biggest one we hear from seniors. They're so worried they're going to take it away from a family or somebody else who might need it more than they do. Um, and one of the others, it's too hard to apply for SNAP. There are a lot of different ways to apply for SNAP. Families can do that um, by applying online at Access Florida, which we are a partner with, uh, by mail, or get one-on-one -on -one help in person at our outreach centers. So our Your Plate facility, which is here in Fort Pierce, um, we do do the SNAP enrollment and do one-on-one -on -one assistance uh, for families in need. And we do have assisters in English, Spanish, and Creole, which are the three primary languages in our area. We also have a benefits enrollment um, center up in Stewart called Full Child Connection, but they do serve more than just children. <clears throat> So in 2023, our senior SNAP program, we screened over one, th our screened 1,133 seniors um, and assisted 720 seniors in applying for SNAP benefits, um, which results in an economic impact of over a million dollars that is filtered throughout our community um, and is the equates to 221 1,259 meals for those families that we served. So that is a lot of meals for those seniors that we helped out. And all of that information is based off of our uh, 2023 Feeding America SNAP Impact Calculators. So I went through a lot of that very, very quickly for you because I know I'm limited on time. But I also provided you guys today with our little uh, wrap card. So you have that about our Your Plate Health and Wellness Center. If you ever need to get a hold of us, the information is here. If you ever have a senior in need of SNAP uh, services, and we will work with that senior to get them enrolled. Um, also, thanks to the National um, Institute on Aging, we were able to provide all attendees this morning with what's on your plate, uh, smart food choices for healthy aging. And this is packed full of wonderful nutrition tips, recipes. Um, so enjoy. <laughs> And I went through it very quick, but thank you guys so much for attending today. Good job. <laughs> <laughs>Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Ryan Carrera. I'm a registered dietitian as well as a senior nutrition educator here um, at Trojan Coast Food Bank. I actually am, I have my roots in clinical dietetics. So I'm a clinical dietitian kind of moving into the community setting, which I'll tell you is a lot more fun and a lot less stressful, or a lot less stressful. You're going from doing two feeds and TPNs and working with physicians to teaching classes out in the community and interacting. Um, so I really, really enjoy my time here. I've been here about four months now, four or five months. So yeah, everything's going well. So um, I do work um, kind of in two programs. I work in the SNAP Ed department, uh, but I am also working with the uh, Medical Tailored Meals program here. Uh, but I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the SNAP Ed program here. So our SNAP Ed program is an evidence-based program that helps people uh, make their SNAP, edgy, or SNAP dollar stretch and teaches them how to shop and cook healthy meals for themselves. Um, just so uh, they can lead physically active lifestyles and healthy, uh, healthy lives. Um, so SNAP Ed does partner with state and local organizations to meet people where they are. You know, we do go to Council on Aging. Uh, we go to a lot of different, you know, Goodwill, uh, a lot of uh, lower income apartment complexes, things like that. And so we're always constantly looking for places to hold these classes uh, and, uh, and, and engage with these folks. 
Um, so what do we do in a day? Um, on the nutrition education side, um, we obviously hold the community, the classes in the community. Um, we do the health fairs. Um, so we really try to get our, our voice out there just to see our feelers out there so we can get people to, you know, so we can get new locations. Um, and we do PSE, um, which is the positive, positive community change at different levels, different PSE activities. Um, but really what we've really honed in on are the nutrition education classes. Um, they're a lot of fun. Uh, we try to really engage our participants, try to just show them that it's easy. It's easier. Uh, it is easy to eat healthy um, to a certain extent versus going, you know, fast, the fast feed route all the time. So, um, so the last thing, part of my uh, presentation here is to do a little bit of a recipe demo. And uh, usually everybody during all, every class that I ever hold looks forward just to the food at the very end, right? That's what they want to get to. Um, so today I picked something uh, kind of interesting, a uh, banana sushi recipe. Um, it's something easy uh, that can be made at home with a lot of common ingredients that a lot of folks would have at home. Um, and it's also creative and it tastes really, really good. So we're ready to do that. Ready? Yeah. Cool. You can tell that we have so cleverly covered all of our brand names here, but whole wheat tortillas are something that we want to start with. If you can, we definitely want to get um, a little bit more fiber from the 100% whole wheat options versus just the refined grain tortillas, things like that. Um, if you can, try and purchase natural peanut butters. Um, I know a lot of people sometimes don't like that oily, slick top on a lot of the natural peanut butters. It is actually how peanut butter is supposed to be. It's supposed to separate and you're supposed to mix it every time. But whatever you know you can find um, definitely works, okay? So the recipe does call for two tablespoons. We're gonna kind of eyeball it for today's purposes here. And basically, what we're gonna do is just spread it around the tortilla pretty easily. You wanna spread it around and leave about a fingertips uh, width around the corner of the tortilla. Yeah, put that to the side. So next, um, you can choose to uh, put raisins or nuts on your uh, on your banana sushi here. I like to include the nuts. They're a good source of uh, healthy fats for us. Um, I know the peanut butter does obviously have that as well. Uh, but mixing a different type of nut, whether it's walnuts, pecans, whatever you like, uh, definitely gives you a nice variety. The raisins just add a little bit more sweetness to it, a little bit of mouthfeel, a little texture there. So today we're gonna use pecans. Gonna scatter them around just a little bit. I feel like I should be on the Food Network. <laughs> and then a little bit of cinnamon on the top. Just a little bit. Doesn't take much. Perfect. And the last thing, obviously, we have our banana. Open it from the bottom. Lay it right on there, get like that. and then you're going to bring it all the way to the back and then roll it nice and tight, almost like a burrito. Just like that, bring it to your center, take off the end there, and just make your little slices. Nice. Just like that. And it really makes a nice little presentation when you're done. You almost feel like an actual sushi chef. <laughs> Get rid of your ends there. Take that away. And you have yourself a nice banana sushi. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I do have samples for everybody. This is just for demo purposes, but I have a whole platter here. If you'd like, come on up and we can get you served up, okay?